Hi everyone. Hoping this is, message is finding you. Having enjoyed a great weekend. It's beautiful outside today. Got some time outside myself. Um, it certainly makes you feel uh, a whole lot different about things. So I'm hoping that you get a chance to be outside too. And today I am joining you to talk a little bit about growth mindset. I decided to go with this topic because it holds hands very well with Responsive Classroom, which is what we talked about last week during the vlog. And so I'm hoping that this will help you to start framing your thoughts with your fifth into sixth grader. And you're also um, you know, just thinking about how, ways that you can institute these uh, philosophies in your own family. Um, you know, I try to do that at home at my family, with my family as well, and I find it helpful to have these these little tips. So let's get started. I am going to present my screen to you so that you can see these slides a little bit bigger. And basically a growth mindset is a mindset that asks you to learn, put in effort, it keeps going, it embraces challenge, and it learns from feedback. And the opposite of that, obviously, is you know ignores feedback, doesn't try, gives up easily, mistakes are bad, and avoids challenges. So we'll talk a little bit more about this as we move through the presentation. And we will start a little bit with growth mindset resources and, re and how Responsive Classroom fits in with growth mindset. Responsive Classroom, which we, we talked about last week in our vlog, is the overall philosophy at Gibbs School. And so teachers are running classrooms and creating classrooms with environments that are responsive and that really uh, provide children with what they need in order to learn and grow and feel safe and supported. As you start to learn about growth mindset, in the next few minutes, you think back to that responsive classroom vlog from last week. We talked about language that's reinforcing and reminding and redirecting. We talked about goal setting. We talked about time and space, and we talked about providing engagement in rules for students. So you'll understand why growth mindset fits so well with those tenets of Responsive Classroom. I also wanted to give you a few resources if you'd like to read beyond this presentation. Carol Dweck is the really the founder of this mindset. She has a book called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. So that is a book you certainly can check out. Um, the other book that I have found to be great is The Yes Brain, and that's by Daniel Siegel and Tina Payne Bryson. Angela Duckworth writes a book called Grit, and Paul Tuff writes a book called How Children Succeed. So if this topic interests you beyond the presentation, you can certainly check out one of those authors uh, to learn a little bit more. So why growth mindset? The reason why growth mindset is something that Gibbs has decided to roll out parallel to responsive classroom is because it's a very easy way for students to understand that phrase, you learn from your mistakes. The science behind it is neuroplasticity, which means the brain has an incredible power to stretch and to grow. And so that research, what it shows is that the brain is able to change and grow even into old age the brain gets stronger the more you use it, and it is also programmed to seek patterns. And it's this pattern-seeking behavior and the neuroplasticity in the brain that asks us to practice skills over and over again before they become you know, part of what the pattern that we follow on a day-to-day -day basis. Because the brain remembers that you did something once, it, make, it makes the second time easier and the third time even easier than that. If we give up, however, when something is hard, the brain never gets to make that pattern that it's seeking, and it doesn't change, and it doesn't grow. It doesn't learn that persistence and that grit that it needs in order to kind of puzzle through challenging things and make them easier and easier each time. So when you're thinking about growth mindset and it, and it being an important part of work as teachers and parents, you're thinking about the difference between the two to help children see why it's so important to have a growth mindset. People with a growth mindset feel like intelligence really is just the beginning, that failure is not evident of unintelligence, and it signifies a lesson learned and an opportunity to grow. 
and that basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. And a growth mindset also fosters a love of learning and resilience. A fixed mindset is that intelligence, character, creativity, they're fixed traits from birth. They cannot be effectively changed if you're in a fixed mindset. That success is only dependent upon having that inherent intelligence. That talent alone is what creates success and that effort plays little, if any, role in success at all. So this is the difference between that fixed and growth mindset. So it's much better to be living in a growth mindset world if you ask me. At school, then, what that looks like is teachers at Gibbs are always concentrating on the following things. We're thinking about teaching our children to remember what they know and what they do well, and those skills that help them know what they know and do well at what they can do well at, those are transferable skills. You can pick those skills up and put them down with something that's new and a little bit harder. In addition, we talk about all people being learners. We're not necessarily experts or even proficient at something when we start out at it. At school, we talk about how changing your language can change your mindset. And we talk about the power of yet. And I'll go into those two, those last two, a little bit more as we move through this presentation. This is a sample of the bulletin board that is in every single Gibbs classroom called Change Your Words, Change Your Mindset. Your sixth grader will know this language and will learn how to apply it in each subject area. So you might have a little bit of different nuances depending on the subject, but for the most part, it asks you to think about something that might be in a fixed mindset and change it into a growth mindset. For example, I can't make this any better to, I can always improve, I'll keep trying, or it's good enough changes to, is this really my best work? That leads us to the power of yet, that there are gonna be times when it does feel to a student that they can't do something or they're not great at it. We ask students to add yet to phrases like that, because you may not be able to do it yet, or you may not understand it yet, but setting goals and small steps will help you get to the space where you can say, I can do this. I do understand this. The most important thing we can give our young children is that hope for growth. And we spend lots of time on this power of words as teachers, not only what we say to our students, but also what we say about ourselves. So sixth graders will learn how to grow their mindset at Gibbs School. They might need some reminders along the way and they'll need reminders from you too, but they will know the following things. When they are presented with a new challenge, they can meet that challenge if they remember what they know, approach the task with persistence, work their way through challenges with grit. And here are five ways that you can model and encourage growth mindset at home. Pay attention and verbally praise your children for the journey they take in their accomplishments and not just in the final product. So add comments along the way, feedback along the way. Wow, you're really getting closer. Wow, you really worked hard at that part. Be a growth mindset role model and take the words I can't and I am not good at out of your own language. Encourage your children to take the challenging route. Grow your brain by making mistakes and learning from them. Remind children that growth mindset is not just academic. Okay, it can, it can be applied to all parts of life. And finally, discourage envy and comparison to peers who appear successful on the outside. This is a really good graphic that can help you understand a little bit about growth mindset and also help your children to take a look at what people see on the outside, that success that you don't know what's underneath, the dedication that led to that success, the hard work, the discipline, and maybe the disappointment and maybe sacrifice and failure and persistence. So comparing yourself to somebody else who, who it seems like has it all together, you know, a lot of work under the surface work went into that.
And it's that work underneath the surface where the growth lies. It's not in the final product. This might also help you to talk a little bit about the pandemic. Um, while some of these things might make more sense for the very beginning of the, of the pandemic, you know, thinking about when your children say things like, I'm stuck at home, I will get sick, I will run out of items at home, shifting that language to realizing that I can control it, I will self-isolate, I have prepared for this. There are also ways we can help motivate students academically through this crisis. Um, I can't do my schoolwork at home. I can't see work, see or work with my friends. School will not be the same in the fall. What if I don't know anyone and have to meet people on the computer? I won't wear a mask to school because I don't like the way it looks. Can turn into phrases like the following. This will be different, but I still know how to learn. I can use Google Hangout and FaceTime to see and work with my friends. Teachers are working really hard to make sure sixth grade will be great. There is an advisory at Gibbs and I will be able to meet new friends no matter what. No one really likes masks, but if we find a pattern you like, we can make one for school. These are ways you can start to flip that mindset and change it from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset when talking about school in the fall. As you move through these summer months, I encourage you to remember that, that all students were in a remote learning situation and that summer should be about reading to your children or having them read to you, going on adventures with your families, resetting, and start growing your family mindset. Be positive about having a great summer and about starting school in the fall. Those are the things that you should be concentrating on as a family in the summertime. My next vlog will be on our about our project block based learning work at Gibbs and our project block. And this may have some ideas for you too, to start working on over the summer. I hope this growth mindset vlog was helpful to you. I hope that you're able to take some of what you heard here and apply it in your home with your family. And I look forward to talking with you next week about our project based learning at Gibbs and maybe even how you can get that started over the summer too. So thanks for watching. Talk with you soon. Have a great week.